Hi, I'm Limo Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at insert effects. So the first thing we need to be aware of is the concept of insert effects, because it's not just specific to Ableton Live, it's a, it's a general music technology-based situation. And what it means is you have a source sound, and then you have it running through a mixing channel, and then it goes to a master channel or a mix bus, and that's where we hear our com combination of all the, the signals within a mixing environment. An insert sits between the source sound and where it ends up. So rather than a signal being sent as a copy to feed another effect, the effect is actually placed on the original sound itself, and we hear whatever that effect gives out. So to do that in terms of the, the, the signal flow of uh, Ableton Live's uh, mixing environment, we have an uh, audio clip here. That audio clip is running to the master via the audio two set in there, and we want to insert the signal before it gets to that master uh, track. So if I just bring up the device view here, we grab like a typical effect to just show this, a reverb, and we drag that down to that channel path. If we press play, just turn the reverb off for a minute. Press play. Nothing's happening. We turn the reverb on. And we're hearing the original signal once it's passed through this device. So we can do that with a couple of other effects as well. So again, for, for clarity reasons, let's go for a, a go-to kind of effect, like a delay. So this brings us to another point to be aware of when you're doing insert effects. Now, the reverb is happening after my arpeggiated line is playing. And then we're hearing what the reverb has done to the sound, and we're listening to its output. However, the reverb itself has a balance control between what's called the dry signal, which is as if that reverb was never placed on the track, and then hearing the 100% wet signal, which is only the reverb with none of the original source sound being heard. So if you like, it's like a crossfader or balancing um, pot that you're doing between that original signal and that modified version of the signal. Now, normally with a reverb, you'll never hear only reverb. You will always hear some degree of the source sound that creates that reaction of the room. So the dry wet balance, which is just down here on the reverb, can be adjusted to, you, to suit to taste where you think that dry signal should sit versus the level of that wet signal. So I'm just gonna turn the delay off for a minute just so we can own, focus just on that reverb and then try and find that strike in that balance point. So I'll move it all the way to the left so it's 100% dry, so I don't actually hear the reverb yet, and then I'll sweep around and figure out where that balance should be between dry and wet. Okay, I'm happy with that for the ambient effect, for the, for the room that's created by that reverb. I'm gonna turn that delay on now, which is creating the rhythmic repeats. And again, set that to dry, all the way to the left. And that sounds like it's adding a nice sense of depth to that signal. Now that's only happening to that track, so if I wanted to do something similar to that, I'd have to apply those same effects to other tracks if I want those to have the same sort of treatment when we're using insert effects. Um, but that for now is a nice sense of ambience. What I want to add now is, let's say, some filtering. So we'll go to Auto Filter. We'll just add that in. And what this is doing is the signal from the lowest sounds to the highest, brightest sounds normally are fully heard. And what a filter is doing is rejecting some of those frequencies or the, some of that information. And a very traditional one to use for being able to introduce a sound or take a sound away out of a song composition is what's called a low pass filter. So if you look at the auto filter here, this is the representation of all the frequencies, and this line being in the middle allows them to pass. 
So at the moment, if I move this dot all the way to the right, which is called our cutoff frequency, it's allowing all the sound to pretty much pass through that filter. Now if I play this sound and I start moving the frequency here, the cutoff frequency down, you'll notice that anything that's above this dot starts being rejected. And in this case, it's the sense of clarity from the sound. So you should have heard that in a lot of compositions already. It's a, it's a very useful way of introducing sounds. Now what's happening is I have the reverb being created and we're hearing that alongside the dry signal to the balance that I've preferred. We're hearing the delay line and we're hearing that in relation to the original sound or at least the sound after the reverb in balance with the delayed sound. And then we're just taking off all the higher frequencies of all those layers and combinations of sounds. So at the moment when I do a filter sweep going down, everything is being reduced down to nothing. Now what we can do is we can simply just drag that effect and put it earlier on in the chain of events, in the sequence. So these devices are running in what's called in series. One goes after the other, into the next and into the next. I'm gonna grab that filter and actually just stick it earlier on. So although it will filter the original sound, what the reverb does after that and what the delay does after that are independent of what the filter's doing to that source sound. So it does sound slightly different. So I'll drag that right to the beginning between those, or to the beginning of those three devices and have a listen to the, the ambience aspect and also those little rhythmic delays as well and see how they sound different. And we'll just do the same motion at the end now. So I'm sweeping that quickly to make it more obvious. When the filter's at the end of the chain of devices, even if it's moved quickly, it will always remove those repeats because they're happening before that filter has a chance to take them out of the equation. However, if we put the filter at the beginning of all those devices, even if it moves it quickly, if there's a moment of brightness, that delay can catch a little bit of that and elongate it and prolong it to happen for longer. So the purpose of that filter can be that it's an absolute stop to all of that track sound, or it can be earlier on in the path, so the source sound gets modified, but the ongoing sequence of events that happens afterwards have a chance to still ring out and be heard afterwards too. So that's the good thing about the, the running order of devices. Sometimes, even if you're not sure what the best running order is, grab a device and move it earlier or later on in the chain and have a listen and make an educated decision as to which you think sounds best based on the nature of what it is you're trying to achieve. So we've looked at what an insert effect is. We've looked at exploring the different audio effects from the audio effects uh, section in the browser. And we've also had a look at the dry wet control alongside the running order of different devices.